come down. The Confederacy, uh, the Battle of Tall Tim, the Confederacy became fractured agreement of peace of the United States. The pan tribal resistance was rekindled by T, the prophet, and his brother Tecumseh, uh, resulting into the formation of Tecumseh Confederacy. So the treaty of 1783 will come through, and that's what that that end up the, the war. George Washington, they're still trying to expand, remember? And now he comes with the civilization plan. The civilization plan, uh, commercial agriculture, Christianity uh, amongst the Indians and important private ownership and land. Americans hope that the Indian people settle down, form life, and they will live. And this is why people who adopted it were slave owners as well, okay? So, some of the people that 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 um, adopted it, right? You had the owner of the nation who played a significant role in the Revolutionary War and the creation of the United States as well. They were Iroquois, having fought uh, in key battles in independence and thought to civilize the Southeastern Indians through programs used by operate in the Mississippi, in the U.S. So they teaming up with them. Not everyone. But some people are against it, which we'll find out. The Cherokee Nation recognized in 1794 to 1907. So at 71, the, the plan, the Cherokee, this new group, who going to form, going to create this. Because remember, the other Cherokee left and went down in Georgia, right? So these are the ones that are against it. And you had some Cherokees who were with it. These are the ones that are going to come together and organize it. They're going to bring together the overhills, the middles, and all of that, and they're going to make it one. Check. And now they can control it. Now, the Cherokee had no standing national government. These people were highly denationalized and lived in bands and clans. They, the people lived in towns scattered amongst autonomous throughout the Appalachian regions. Now, uh, they sought to civilize the Southeastern Indians through programs used by U.S. Indian Benjamin Hawkins facilitated destruction of many Indian towns during the American Revolution. U.S. land agents encouraged Native Americans to abandon their historic communal land, tenure, and settle in isolated uh, farmsteads. All right? Now, the 1790, you had that South Carolina beef going on with the guys down in Florida and Georgia, right? Well, the Kasadi, since they were some of the, the uh, they were some of the, the uh, uh, big, the, the top cats at that time, they went down and spoke, uh, made a treaty. The Kasada entered in the seven treaties with the United States, starting with the Treaty of New York in 1790, signed for the Kasadi by Alexander McGivry. Now, McGivry had uh, uh, Scottish ancestry, okay? His father was Lashawn McGivry who came here through the Forbes Company. Yes, the Forbes uh, Company, who's still here today. Now, they were influential in a lot of the land taken down there in Florida. And so, um, you know, I'm still going to be honest, even though he came through, his mother was through, she was a uh, high-ranking uh, uh, Kasadi lineage. And I said, I'm gonna be because my bloodline is going to go through that same royal line. Let's walk. Chief Hoppy, Musty, and the Creek Treaty of August the 9th, 1814. All right. Now, uh, when the chief negotiated boundary lines with the United States, they stated that the Northwest boundary should stretch to the Casada lands, Tennessee. This is clear indication that the Casada people considered these lands and what is now Tennessee as their homelands. Never renounced them and that they claim was widely known and accepted by all tribes and transcribed text from the papers of the War Department as follows. All right, coming straight from the government. So you have what is called U.S. Westward Expansion, right? Expansion of the United States in the 18, 19 centuries movement displaced most of Native American people who lived in the lands for thousand years before the uh, arrival. Now this is Western Expansion. They're about to expand the 13 colonies. And, and what this is called is called they're going to displace the Native Americans who lived in these lands for thousands of years, okay? So now that the Treaty of Paris, 1783, after the Revolutionary War is signed, then guess what? The first thing went into place, the proclamation line was null and void. Now they can expand. 
and now they're trying to they're looking to take the land. So Louisiana Purchase to come up in uh, 1803. You had a treaty in front of Butler in 1762 with Spain was seeing Louisiana to, 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 to Spain for a short period of time. Now, while this happened, this is a real uh, uh, joint. It said cheap labor wanted in cotton fields in the South. So the cotton was in the South. Remember we talked about the Manila and their trade in the Philippines? Well, guess what? It's still going on at this time. So you have what that's called St. Milo, established a Filipino seamen, okay? So the story goes, when the Manila Gallon came over here, the village served as a wholesale market for uh, ports, departure, and fishes along uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it said that these people came here through the Manila Gallon, brought their slaves, but once the boat stopped in New Orleans, they jumped off and went to live with the indigenous population. So right here, you see they have their own historical marker, and you see the Filipinos are there. So whatever happened to these guys, right? This was in the 1760s. All right, later, 1808, Embargo Act will come in, and that will end the British slave trade to America, so they say, right? Now, they will replace them with coolies. Who were coolies? They were European traders, Asian, Indian, indentured servants from the 19th century, Asian workers under contract plantation, and they were sent here, and that was after the 1807 uh, Slave Act. 